Morning. Right, so my, lo my local guide, Alice, has just turned up. I was going to go drop off my key back to Rosaline uh, for the bungalow for the last two days. Then we're going to get onto this speedboat. I'm not sure what sort of boat I'm getting on. We'll find out soon. Here is our boat for the next two days. So we're at one of the uh, fishing villages along the Ray, which our groups will stop at. Today I'm in the kind of speedboat because, uh, because there's only one of me when some of our groups are in the far larger, slower boat. So this village was devastated by a cyclone a few years ago. As we can see by some of the destruction of the houses and the palm trees. But what's really cool is under here is a whale jawbone, which they got found. Huge. Right, so I think now we're going to head back into the uh, back into the speedboat and head another few hours up the uh, up the river. Back in the boat again, and soon we're going. Just seen a local blacksmith in the village, which was really incredible to see, actually. And uh, like other places I've seen, they've used leaf springs from old vehicles as the main material for uh, making their machetes. Because it's really good steel for making machetes and holding an edge. Incredible the uh, kind of the bellows they made are from tree trunks hollowed out. Absolutely incredible. So we just got to the, uh, the village we're staying in. I thought it would be a homestay tonight, or camping in the, in the fisherman's village. Um, but it uh, turns out it's actually a lovely set of bungalows. Nice room, double bed with mosquito nets. Bathroom, shower, probably short up the stairs. Climbing ladder with holding camera, maybe not the best idea. Oh, another bed up in the roof. And... <laughs> I've noticed the sea's just over there, so hopefully uh, I can go and visit that later on and have a look. Just like everywhere else in the world, you could find people playing football. Brilliant. <laughs> it's 
We're now going to walk back up to the village and the bungalows, or maybe have a little bit more of an explore of the area. Making rum from sugar cane. It takes only one week to ferment and they're making litres of it. Ooh. So, to ferment the rum, they put this bark in the yellow containers which is filled with the um, sugar cane juice. Leave it, and then that causes a fermentation for the week, and then they have rum at the end of it. We had a pretty good look round the village, which I think some of our groups will do here. It's actually quite a big village, it's got about two and a half thousand people who live in it. It's got 12 kings who live in the village, and we went to go see the king who lives in the, the, um, one of the central points. We saw uh, how uh, they make the local rum. I didn't realise it only took a week to make rum from sugarcane and I got to try some of the um, kind of sugarcane juice which was actually quite sweet and tasty and they put in a type of bark which uh, starts the fermentation process and that's only for a week and then they've got a uh, then they've got the local rum uh, tomorrow's plan is we're gonna, we're gonna go see something, I think Elephant Rock it's called. I'm not quite sure what that is. We'll see that in the morning uh, and then we're gonna go make our way back to uh, Mananjari. So that's, uh, that's the plan for today. Well, best plan today is I'll write up some of the information today for the report and then um, tomorrow will be to get back in the speedboat and head back again. Brilliant. Right. See you later, guys. This bed is super comfy.